After months of unforced errors and some shaky poll numbers since his historically early kickoff of a third run for the White House, former President Donald J. Trump is finally having a run of good luck. He's starting off his 2023 much better than he ended 2022. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy rebuffed a bid from a small cadre of House members to claim the Speaker's gavel. Mr. McCarthy was supported by Mr. Trump and gave the former president credit for helping to end the impasse on the House floor and swing the votes that helped allow Republicans to proceed with the people's business. Now, that business immediately included votes to make good on GOP campaign promises, including eliminating the funding for the 87,000 IRS agents and protecting children born alive after a failed abortion. Democrats voted in lockstep against those, handing Republicans at least rhetorical victories. The GOP House even garnered bipartisan partisan support for legislation to stop the Biden administration from selling any more of our strategic petroleum reserve to communist China. Then President Biden's visit to the border was a big bust, with even mainstream media outlets calling it what it was, a sanitized photo op that was upended by Governor Greg Abbott's laundry list of demands for action, none of which the administration is inclined to implement. The 45th president, who has been unusually quiet over the last couple of months, then got to sit back and watch as his successor was exposed for a monumental hypocrisy over the handling of classified documents curiously discovered by his attorneys at the Penn Biden Center offices and his Delaware garage, of all places. Those revelations spurred the naming of a special counsel by the Justice Department. Now the document discoveries have dragged up more questions about communist China funding the Penn Biden Center, our two-tier justice system biased against conservatives, and what the documents may have to do with Hunter Biden's business dealings. Now, the whole thing dramatically reduces or even eliminates the possibility Mr. Trump will be prosecuted for documents he says he declassified, which were found at his Mar-a-Lago estate. Arguably, the Biden mishandling of the documents is far worse. Now, all of these occurrences over the last couple of weeks have far more to do with the strange mistress that is American politics rather than anything that Mr. Trump or his campaign has done. But they do provide the former president with an opportunity to attempt to get back on offense. Mr. Trump had a lackluster campaign launch in November that was followed in December by the loss of a third Georgia Senate race. Then there was the public flap over his dinner with Kanye West and Nick Fuentes and a campy, widely panned and arguably totally misleading major announcement about the sale of $99 digital playing cards from which he personally made an undisclosed but surely massive amount of money. Donors are also still asking questions about how much of the more than $100 million Mr. Trump raised to help 2022 candidates actually ended up being spent on those key races. But 2023 can mean a reset of sorts for Mr. Trump, who continues to lead a GOP presidential primary field but has experienced some erosion of support in recent months. Now, the challenge for him is clear. Mr. Trump is an exceptionally well-defined personality. Now, that's a blessing and a curse. You know, actors get typecast, and so do politicians. While his policies garner a great deal of public support, he now must convince GOP primary voters that he can win a general election in 2024. And that means addressing his political Achilles heels, namely women, suburban voters, and disaffected Republicans who are looking for new blood. Rallies don't win elections. New messaging and perhaps a new approach to reach beyond his political base is necessary. And it's anybody's guess if he will do it or what it will look like. His upcoming event in South Carolina will be a major test. Keep an eye out for that in a couple weeks. Donald Trump has reinvented himself many times during his long and varied career, from a young developer to fashion designer to reality TV uh, television superstar to president of the United States. People, however, tend to stay stuck on their perceptions of those who have achieved such fame. Mr. Trump could have as hard a time trying to convince people now that he can be more presidential or more emotive or more likable as Mr. Biden can, getting people to believe that he's a young 80, lucid and in control. With public polling, which of course can be wrong, showing a majority of Americans preserving, preferring something other than a Trump-Biden rematch, and Mr. Trump upside down on favorability in many polls, the former president needs a campaign as bold as his reputation, maybe even a little surprising, to regain momentum not just with primary voters, but those he'll need to go all the way in 2024. There's no silver medal in this race, folks, but he is starting out this year strong. 
To be sure, though, the DeSantis's, Pompeo's, Haley's, and Hutchinson's of the party are waiting in the wings and watching his most important performance yet. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.